right, greetings Vancouver. Welcome back to another episode of Vancouver Real. My name is Mike Zaremba and that's at Mike underscore Zaremba for Twitter and at Floating Yogi on Instagram. And with me to my right is my brother Andy. You didn't say big brother today. I haven't said it for several podcasts. <laughs> that's I'm good, you broke the habit. To you. And that would be Andy uh, at Andy Zaremba on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm really excited for today's podcast. This is going to be one that uh, we were having a little talk beforehand about wherever you are is where you're meant to be, mm. you know? And if uh, we weren't meant to be here right now, we'd be somewhere else. It's true. I don't know. That's a weird statement, but well, it's kind of true. We'll let that simmer in the old noggin for a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, while that's simmering, you know, if you're on a, on a web browser or if you want to check out some other mental activities, check out floathouse.ca. It's our website here at Float House, and that's at 70 West Cordova Street in Vancouver, BC, and also at 1926 West 4th Avenue in Kitsilano. And uh, we obviously have flotation tanks or sensory deprivation tanks where people come and kind of hit the pause button on not only their life, but I'd say hit the pause button on the, you know, the, the physical universe, if you will. Maybe. Hey, it could be anything. It works for me. Physical universe, your life, it's all the same thing. Right. And, you know, people come just kind of use our, our tanks for many applications, whether it be for stress management, pain management, or deep facilitated meditation and introspection. So check it out online. And if uh, the creativity piece, I think, is a really interesting ooh, one. Yeah. You know, if you're kind of having one of those days when you can't settle in the tank and you're having trouble calming your mind, well, maybe that's not the day to do that. You know, why fight it? So what I'll do, I'll kind of just start actively thinking about things that are going on in my life, actively thinking about problems or uh, my own personal behaviors. Uh, And a lot of times I come to pretty clear solutions to those problems or behaviors that I might be experiencing in my life at that time. So it's the kind of difference between a passive and an active float. Passive, you drift away. And we talked about this a little bit earlier, how you kind of drop is a weird sensation of either dropping yep. or rising sometimes. It's very strange. Or if it's an active float, you're very cerebral, you're in your head, but you can accomplish a lot still too. Mm-hmm. That's true. So the applications are diverse mm-hmm. and really personal. And so it doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong way to float. It's kind of whatever you want to bring to it and set that intention and, and um, just have your direct primary experience, as Terrence McKenna would say. So... Um, Today's a a really cool, unique podcast for us because last fall, we wanted to do something that was a little different. We we wanted to try a contest to, to, you know, just uh, multiple reasons, really. We wanted to, you know, attract some attention to the show, uh, to also spread awareness to what we were giving away, and... um, you know, do a little bit of both. And I think we were successful at that, for sure. I think we definitely got a lot of eyeballs on us for what we did. And what we did was we uh, had basically an ayahuasca contest, we'll call it. And we decided to send somebody um, who was a viewer of the podcast or a listener of the podcast to, to enter into a contest to be sent to Peru for a week-long retreat to a, a place called Spirit Quest Sanctuary, which is a, a um, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an ayahuasca retreat center, I guess you could say. I, I mean, there's probably a lot better words for it than that. And um, it's, some, it's a place that I've been to twice, so it wasn't just we were sending someone to a mysterious place in, in, into Peru. Uh, it's something I had actually been there myself and checked it out and uh, was very confident with the level of professionalism, uh, the care and attention to the, the very vulnerable and sensitive states that people enter into when using these types of um, plant modalities and plant medicines. And um, so that's what we did. We held the contest, and today we have with us the winner of that contest, back from her experience, back from Peru, is Carmel Stace. Very grateful winner. Thank you guys so much. It, oh, you're you're welcome. I mean, it's we kind of put it out to you before you went on the on the trip. Um, no pun intended, that, uh, you know, if you felt like sharing your experience when you come back, it would be like a really neat opportunity for this podcast to happen. And, and thankfully, uh, you were game. You kind of emailed me mess- 
probably like a day or two after you got home and said like, yeah, let's do it. I'm, I'd love to share and talk about it. And then here you are. Yeah, so welcome yeah. to Vancouver Real. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. More than welcome. Yeah. What a journey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, so first of all, we have a, a card here that I want to open on on air, if you will, uh, from you. So I just want to kind of see that. And uh, it says, Dear Mike and Andy, the gracious gift you have given me is something held forever in eternity. The gift of connecting to something deeper is always the greatest gift. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Ohm, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Carmel. So thank you, Carmel. That's uh, super sweet, and that's the first time I've read that. So thanks for not using any uh, anything profane in there. Yeah. Not that we shy away from that, but uh, no, I had we're, to hold back. Yeah. Uh, we're good. We're good with the the, the swear words. Yeah, yeah. and she also brought uh, you know, some gifts from the Peruvian I gotta show jungle my there. I got a nice bracelet there from. Uh, as I know, I got this cool. We are actually looking at a banned substance here, folks. Exactly. That's illegal. This is. Uh, ayahuasca the evil evil ayahuasca right here no i'm just kidding it's awesome <laughs> it's definitely not evil that's for damn sure it's actually yeah. uh just a plant as you can see it's a that's a plant but uh yep. i'm not really supposed to be holding this in my hand according to the people in power so thank you for this gift thank you for accepting actually it. we should say in peru this is actually a sacred plant and it's used for a lot of healing and yeah. you guys are going to speak a lot more uh, on that in a few minutes yeah and also she gave me this amazing book letting go with uh, David R. Hawkins, he is the writer of Power vs. Force, really a famous book, and I'm really looking forward to reading this one as well. So thank you. Oh, thank yeah, you. Thank Ed. you so much. Mm -hmm. So um, welcome back. When did you thank get you. home officially? How long uh, has it been? Oh. May 21st. So it's been a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but less than a month less since than you've a gotten month. home. Yeah, I took off on the 9th and uh, pretty much flew down there for this and flew right back. And yeah. Cool. That was that was my first experience with Peru, going deep into the jungle and going straight to the heart of their medicines. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And so let's maybe back up a little bit. And and um, for those of you who don't know ayahuasca, um, there's lots of videos out there explaining it. So we don't really need to go into the depths of that. There's you know it can kind of we'll, we'll probably get into it um, organically as we kind of get going with it. Sure. But for yourself, what was it that um, initially brought you to enter into this contest? Um, well, I mean, initially I came and floated with you guys just after you opened and floating and the, uh, what it offers for you is I walked away from a float that felt like nothing happened and five minutes after I got out of here I was vibrating for half an hour and absolutely recognized that my body was healing itself. And so I floated quite a few times since then, and then you guys started the podcast, and um, plant medicine has been something very dear to my life the last two years, three mm. years for sure. So, okay, in what way? How, how has it been? Um, connecting to something deeper, like I said, helping, to, helping you to go past those limits that you maybe weren't able to before, and the sacredness of it. Um, I only started using cannabis, uh, I would say almost a year, ab a year ago, and someone introduced it to me with the deepest intention in ceremony, and I've used it ever since. And so even when you go on this ayahuasca retreat, you have to leave different medicines for like up to a month or more before you go and use ayahuasca. And I was wondering, oh, how am I going to feel without using cannabis for a certain amount of time before I go and do this? And because I found using it so sacredly every time I approached it, there's no withdrawal, there's no sure. disconnect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really interesting too. That's always something that I kind of uh, look back in my life retroactively and think uh, how I wish I could have been introduced to cannabis and that how I think that people should be introduced to cannabis, yeah. which is a very, um, I'd say like a, a mild, um, but can be extremely intense um, plant medicine. I have a lot to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Since I've been back. But I'm getting to the point of you were introduced to it in a ceremonial context. Yeah. Whereas I was introduced to it by my 18 year old buddies back in high school. And, you know, it was, uh, we didn't know what we were doing. We had no intention. There was no reverence. We didn't see it like that way at all. And I always thought how 
like how would my relationship have, have been changed with, with cannabis if it, I was introduced to it via a ceremonial experience? Because I personally have had a lot of very intense personal spiritual experiences with cannabis in my system and using it with uh, meditation or yoga, like physical asana practice or with floating. Mm -hmm. And so that's only come around the last couple of years where I've had this different relationship with it. Um, but imagine that was how you were introduced to it by someone uh, with experience and guiding you through that process. And obviously that's how you were. So that's really cool. Yeah. Well, maybe that's because it's illegal. It most certainly is because it's illegal, right? Yeah. Because if you if it weren't illegal and you could actually be introduced to it properly and in some kind of ritualistic fashion or even just under the right circumstances, um, it wouldn't be such a taboo thing. It wouldn't be you and your friends sneaking out into the backyard or wherever it was that you were doing it. Um, and uh, it would be much more out in the open and probably a, a lot more benefit around it as opposed to uh, the way most people are, are exposed to it normally, right? Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a lot of stuff coming up in this city right now. It's really fascinating yeah. actually with the dispensaries. There's now over 90 dispensaries in the city. And I it's there was more. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's it's, it's just probably going to be who knows. It seems like there's a couple new ones every single week. Yeah. And the crazy thing about that is it's actually still illegal. I know. And, and, and there's a bunch of people who basically said, we don't care anymore, and we're going to set up shop and start selling. And the interesting thing about that is the VPD has openly stepped up and said, we don't care. We're not going to stop them. But it's still illegal. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it is illegal federally. It's not enforced in Vancouver whatsoever. Maybe if RCMP were to come into town uh, or they are in town or they, you know, they wanted to crack down, which might happen as an example, uh, that would be an issue. And there's different various, there's various groups out there now trying to stop dispensaries. And I think it's nuts. It's crazy. Mm. You know, I just got exposed to this group uh, just today and I was, I, mean, I get really fired up about this one. Because I don't see any reason. First of all, cannabis uh, prohibition is completely hypocritical. There's there's no logical reason why it should be illegal at all. You can compare it to look at, at the very base level of alcohol and cigarettes. If alcohol and cigarettes are illegal, why, why is cannabis illegal? Just on that very yeah. superficial level. I mean, that alone, I think, in my mind, stomps it. You know, stomps the yeah. argument. So. There's this group out there. I got a letter from the Gastown BIA that is sending. They sent. They're going to send a letter to the CEO of BC Hydro, uh, asking them because these shops are illegal and they want to stop the spread of this thing, to stop providing these uh, businesses with power. They're going to turn off their electricity. And it BC seems. Hydro it seems. Can't even do it that seems legally, like, like. It seems like very almost like vigilante mob justice in a way. It's weird. weird. Like it's so it's weird. Like that can't happen. And it does. And, uh, what the I'm press do. behind that and the explosion behind that would be nuts. Well, what I'm gonna We'd do? We'd start growing it in the streets. Just use the sun, guys. Oh, yeah. Be crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna have a conversation with somebody in the BIA tomorrow to make sure I don't get oh. in any trouble myself. Mm. Uh, but afterwards, I'm gonna throw this letter that I was just kind of given to you because of a group that I'm involved with i'm going to throw it up on social media and put it out to all the correct channels to the people who don't want to see that mm -hmm. in fact the title of the letter is let's put mark emery uh in the dark or something like that because they want to just turn off his power it's crazy it's it's like it, it's it's weird i don't even know yeah I, I don't know how to it's like mob justice in a way it's a control issue it's, it's strange right yeah so anyways i want to expose that tomorrow uh, and i will yeah. So, so how about yourself though? Like, what you've only been? I mean, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, I'm 31. You're 31, and you only really started using cannabis a year ago. Yeah. Now, other than my 18 year old experience in Amsterdam, where it right. was like a crazy psychedelic trip. Right. Uh, for sure. Did you, Did you do an edible? Uh, no, we smoked out a bong in a coffee shop. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll do boy. it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For, especially for your first go. Yeah. Um. But then, why did you get back into it? And and what has that relationship been with? been like for you for the last year? Um, 
I didn't go near it. I actually hated the smell. It like repulsed me. If anyone was near me that was smoking, I was like, I would get offended. Oh, for I'm, me, I love it. When oh, I walk I down, it. when no, I walk yeah. down the street, I'm like, oh yeah, there's yeah, my friend. Exactly. <laughs> um, but I also didn't have a an interest. There just wasn't a curiosity. One of my friends from Australia said once about um, drugs, medicines, whatever. She goes, I just don't have a curiosity for it and I, it just struck me I was like that's mine I, I just don't have a curiosity for it and then um, three years ago I met someone who it had been part of his journey in getting to where he was and that was part of his life in order to be with him he wanted me to, to experience it as well Interesting. and yeah. I trusted him enough and uh, psilocybins were the first uh, step into that and it was a beautiful exp experience of, you know, watching a fear come up and choosing something else and then just having the whole experience blossom into really cool. so much more. So, right. Yeah. So it, it was those few medicines. And then um, again, it wasn't until last year, there was just something in me said yes to cannabis. And um, it just the first time I, I used it ceremonially, it, it opened something way, way deeper for me. Yeah, so. cool. How was that ceremonial structured? Like, how, tell me about your, your cannabis ceremony experience. It was out camping with a friend, and you know, I'd like to say it was super ceremonial in that we were completely by ourselves and so on. But there were other people around, not with us, but at the campground, and we both just sat there and set intentions and. Um, held that you know space of intention and meditation and intent focus together and bless and give thanks for what we were whatever was going to arise mm -hmm. from here we mm -hmm. had our intentions met or set and um yeah i remember stepping away uh we kind of were in our own space and i went down to the, the river that was right there and uh just had this like really deep awareness that i wasn't my body for the first time it was like I, it's like I couldn't feel the bottom half or see the bottom half of my body, but I was still there next to the river. Wow. Very and, cool. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing too, like, you know, people might think like, oh, a ceremony's got to be this big, elaborate, uh, you know, uh, colorful, musical experience uh, with people and a shaman. Not necessarily, you know, yeah. it can be just this uh, personal, intimate, reverence um, experience, bringing reverence to it, respect, and and then setting your intention and being real with that and being sincere, just mm -hmm. being honest and be like, this is what I'm, you know, this is what I'd like to put out there, and then and then when you take these plant medicines, be it psilocybin mushrooms, cannabis, ayahuasca, uh, wachuma or San Pedro, which is mescaline. Um, you know, the the energy of those plants will infuse with your energy. Then their energy, there's there is something there. There's, I mean, I, I personally now, since I've gone through, um, I guess it's about eleven ayahuasca ceremonies, have this new understanding of of the life of plants and that they are a being as well. Yeah. And that they have an intelligence and. Um, in fact, I look at them now as an ancestor of human beings because they are. They actually, we share DNA. We have common DNA with plants. And, you know, we evolved from a similar ancestor at some point, which was a bacteria. But I think I heard one time that humans are basically like two chromosomes away from being a tulip. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, well, I think even the fact that you, you, take, this, you take this plant and you experience something with it like what what's connecting the two right like it's, well, it's more right. than just and dna it's it's like it's consciousness it's yeah. just it's, it's just holding it and a lot of the so. cannabis research is coming out now like <laughs> israel has been one of the best countries for pumping out amazing research with cannabis because they you know they're just open to it which is israelis are really interesting people if you ever have a chance to go to israel i haven't been personally but it's on my list for sure i'd, I'd love to go experience that country largely because of the people mm -hmm. and um They've just been very open-minded, and they're, you know, they're, they've shown how our body is full of these cannabinoid receptors, mm -hmm. these, and, and we produce endocannabinoids, endogenous can, cannabinoids, and things like that, these alkaloids that uh, bind with different parts of our body to have different reactions, and it's a part of our physiology. And then we have these plants that have um, cannabinoids that, when we ingest or inhale and interact with, they start working with our physiology and our neurophysiology and they literally shift our energy and sh they shift our perspective and consciousness yeah. into these really interesting 
experiences and like you kind of noted to with your experience at the river you're like okay i'm not my body and there's more you just have these experiences that you can't really generate um well especially with the sanctioned drugs of, of we have in our society today you know mm-hmm. yeah um let's you know let's dive into your trip a little bit and uh you know so we sent you down to spirit quest sanctuary in peru um, there's a, a, a ayahuascaro there uh, named um, Don Robert, and he's like he's like a master. He's mm-hmm. like been doing it for 40 plus years, like or even longer maybe. He's been, and he's just you know a master and a legend of it. And uh, he kind of leads the ayahuasca ceremonies. Don Howard, who actually owns the whole facility down there, is a is a watchumero, and I think he can do ayahuasca as well. Although he, he leads Don Robert to that. And that's his expertise. I, I think he almost, does he participate in it somewhat? That's what I kind of felt. Howard? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. does in my mind. Partici- yeah, like he, he helps yeah. open the space for sure and hold the space and I think he actually is the one that communicates with the participants more yeah. like pre and post ceremony so he's the one that kind of, you know, says like a little more, a little less when they're pouring the cup, yeah, yeah. right? Because yeah. he, he knows you. He'll, he'll, he gets to know you via your applications that you send in. And that's another thing too about these trips is like, you know, yes, we held this contest and you were the winner, but that didn't even guarantee that you were going to go. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And why don't you tell people a little bit about like kind of the whole process you had to go through even to yeah. get down there. So yeah, it uh, requires writing an email and, and saying, you know, I have intentions of joining your retreat. Um, they send you an application that you need to fill out for your intentions, a bit of, a bit of background about yourself, why you want to be there, um, use with medicines in the past. And from there, they pretty much determine whether you're going to be, you know, go down there and join them or not. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, it's, you know, the longer form where it goes into detail questions about what are, you know, what's your definition of shamanism? Um, What's your idea of ayahuasca? What are you expecting out of this trip? And, you know, what are your health concerns? All these things. So it's it's quite detailed. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing, too. Like, he does a really thorough job of screening um, because... There are some people that shouldn't drink ayahuasca yeah. um, and, and, and people that maybe are on different medications like antidepressants and SSRIs are highly contraindicating with ayahuasca. You should not be taking it at all when you're on these forms of antidepressants. Um, anyone that's like, you know, um, struggling with mental health, depending on what that is, like uh, I believe if you are maybe prone, not prone, but susceptible potentially for uh, schizophrenia, you know, unfortunately you, you can't go and do ayahuasca because it could actually create an early onset of schizophrenic behaviors, which mm-hmm. is something that, you know, uh, schizophrenia doesn't mean like you're you're going to be in that frame of mind for the rest of your life, but uh, it's definitely something like not, nothing to play around with. And so that's what that this, these intense applications are for is to really, so he can do the best job possible given the circumstances that we're in of like the majority of the world making this plant medicine illegal. Yeah. Um, and trying to do his due diligence to prove people from coming down. I even found too, like I was surprised, surprised to go down there and find there was 28 people who were participating in this eight days down there. That I showed up and I'm like, that's a lot of people for sitting in ceremony together. Like right. a lot could come up, a lot. Oh yeah. yeah. I'd like it to just kind of get into your experience from when you actually landed and kind of like take us through your journey. Like you landed in Lima? I landed in Lima, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then from there, just like walk somebody through your journey if they were going to go there for the first time. Um, okay, so it's uh, flying to Lima and then you catch a uh, flight to Iquitos that is prearranged to same flight as everyone else who's going to be joining you. And uh, Don Howard has even baggage guys there at the airport to pick you up. They're not even part of the bus company. And then you have the bus company to pick you up and take you to the boats that are waiting at the Aikido stock to take you up the river to the sanctuary. So 
you land in Lima. Um, I met someone else at the that was going to be at the retreat center at the hostel I was staying at. Oh yeah. So we got to cool. catch the taxi together. That was great, and uh, had a great chat with him on the plane. So kind of started to get to connect to people, and then uh, suddenly, next thing you know, you're at an airport with 28 other people who going, hey, you're doing ayahuasca. Hey, you're doing ayahuasca, and you all suddenly have something in common. Yeah. So. For sure. Yeah. And um, so you're at the airport, you fly from Lima to Iquitos, you get picked up, you go to the sanctuary, and describe the sanctuary a little bit. The sanctuary, um, it's a beautiful retreat center on this river, river, the River Momon, I believe. Yeah. And just off the Amazon River, so it's really neat to know you're, you're that close to so much life and you're just in the heart of it all. So you're coming down these winding rivers where there's all these little pathways through the rivers to go to other rivers and you see people on boats, uh, long boats with, you know, they're paddling it or it's a motor and they've got tons of stuff on the back and that already is just an amazing cultural experience to step into the jungle like that and see how people live. Um, so getting to the sanctuary, it's you know an open air sort of concept retreat center. I find where um, you've got covered pathways leading to different malokas or huts, uh, the dining hut, the ceremony maloka, the bedrooms or the suites are all sort of separated throughout as well and it's it's just a beautiful space yeah, yeah he's an amazing job yeah i actually um i was there twice last year and the first time i went was last june and uh when we came when i came back we did a podcast it was actually episode number six called the ayahuasca odyssey where i kind of go into huge detail about my whole experience down there for that that trip and one thing I said about it then, and uh, I'll say it again, is you could go there and um, just the fact that you're in a different country, that you're getting that kind of uh, change of environment, change of scenery, yeah. new culture, new foods, new sights, new smells, new biodiversity, um, being surrounded by this nature that is incredibly dense. I mean, we're talking the Amazon rainforest, the biodiversity in that thing is just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's spectacular. And you can just feel it. Like, uh, I've become personally more sensitive now just when I'm in nature and, and to how I respond to being in that environment. And I really, you know, really was kind of introduced that initially from going to the Amazon and feeling it there because there's just so much life force. There's so much life. And just yeah. going there with all those things, plus having the really clean diet, which we'll get into, the dieta, you don't even have to drink ayahuasca and you'd start to have like an, a, an opening experience, a catharsis experience or cathartic experience, you know, and just by just by going to this type of environment for a, a week and then yeah. the community of people. And, and I found too, just eight days uh, when you are traveling, like you said, and I remember like the boat ride up the river, my heart was just, my mind was so quiet. I was just watching the sun, the sunset or whatever was happening is just you're already dropping into that yeah. experience yeah. and uh, being at a retreat area or somewhere quiet uh, contained that is open still to such nature for eight days in itself for most people to get away for eight days and still be still like you had someone cooking you breakfast lunch and dinner you had people changing your bed cleaning your room um, there's nothing asked of you other yeah. than to show up and and yeah. participate and that's that's the beauty of, of I think you know especially what Don Howard has done with his with his sanctuary yeah. there is because he um, and I really pieces together a lot of my second trip which was last December down there was he's truly a connoisseur of the shamanic arts he's mm -hmm. a master and the whole experience is facilitated so that you can open up as much as possible you can go as deep as possible uh, because you know like you said there's there's nothing to worry about there's no fear there's no stress um, you know I remember the first day or so you're kind of like so what do we do now but it's just like you do nothing mm -hmm. just stop exactly. and breathe and feel and, and start to get connected to your body and um, and then obviously we get into the ceremonies, but it's it's really so masterfully done from the way he's designed the malokas to the relationship of where they are to other parts of the retreat center and how everything's connected. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's spectacular. Yeah, I was, I was quite impressed. I felt like it was four star service down there, and I'm like, I'm in the Peruvian Amazon jungle. Like, who trained these people? Right. Like, and so genuine too. It wasn't like. 
they were doing something because that's their job and they're waiting to get a paycheck. It was genuine. The, the Don Howard and the shamans held the space and so did the, the people who worked there. And I think that's yeah. what made it so comforting and yeah. such an opening space for everyone to sort of sit in and yeah. unfold during the week. And that's the thing, like people will come to this experience uh, for a lot of personal reasons, um, you know, and you know, you have to really become very vulnerable. You got to really let go and trust, trust yourself and trust everyone around you to, to help facilitate that, that catharsis to go through that healing process um, and that knowledge ac acquiring process. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience that I personally would love to you know, welcome anyone that's even slightly curious to do research on and potentially explore because the the benefits that are that can be gained from it are just you know quantum. They're exponential. You you can't even imagine what it could be. You could be like, oh, you could you could think and do as much research as you want and then go and think how you'll be afterwards. You you won't even be in the same city. You won't even be in the same country. You won't be on the same planet. Literally, you know, it's it's like that powerful. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, Would you like to share at all about your own personal experience uh, in ceremony? Is this something you want to do? Sure. Yeah? Sure. Um, do you have any specific questions or you want me to just share what was happening for me in the ceremony? <sighs> Let's start with something. What was your most profound experience, realization? Uh, insight, whatever that or, was, that came to you. Let's start with what was your intention going yeah, into it. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think that's m key for everyone. Just like I said before, we sit down for ceremony, whatever you're doing, even, you know, it's going to the washroom. Everything should be intentional. I'm finding that is the focus and the fixity on your intention throughout the day is key. That's going to make your practice, whether you go to ayahuasca or you go somewhere else. But I kind of had this, like... I didn't know what to expect, and also because I got this this trip given to me, I got there and I f like you're just surrounded with 27 other people who have all been planning this trip for three years. They've all saved up so and so much money, and they've watched every ayahuasca video. And here I am, got given this trip in like November or whenever, and it's May and I'm here. And yes, I wanted to do ayahuasca, but I haven't watched every ayahuasca video. My practice is daily, and I'm not like searching out every way that ayahuasca is going to change my life. So I really showed up with an open mind and um, was just really humbled at being there and being like, wow, so many people have waited so long for this trip. And that was really, uh, really humbling to me. And so my intention uh, just sort of came from my practice here as well, and that is um, to state it simply, to come to know the truth of my, my existence and share that with everyone, shine that bright into everyone's hearts and eyes. And it sort of uh, deepened as the days went along and ceremony continued. Uh, my, in, my contemplation before I left was very deep on infinity and how we speak of consciousness, God, life force, whatever, and call it infinite, and yet we don't actually question that definition. What does that actually mean? If that actually means there's no beginning and no end. Whoa, like, yeah. whoa, like, yeah. keep your focus there. So that, those are the, there was two things that came to me uh, on the journey down, because I had two days flying down to Peru. And um, it was uh, a fixity of meditation on infinity uh, throughout every ceremony. And the, um, the focus is as well on coming to this experience as a little child um, with that innocence and the mudra or the saying that came to me throughout every ceremony was, I don't know what anything is for. Because uh, I really want to let go of any mentation and opinions and judgments and thoughts I had about life that was keeping me blocked. And so those are my two main intentions going into every ceremony. and. It was beautiful because every ceremony, um, I'd set aside an hour before the ceremony to reflect and drop in, meditate, listen to songs. <laughs> and there was two or three songs that kept coming up that were my intention put into a song. Mm. And I'd have a little ceremony before every ceremony I did. Cool. So, yeah, it was neat. 
And uh, obviously, when you go into ceremony, it's yeah, it's, it's very well done. It is very. I don't want to say serious, but it's very, um, you know, people are there and they're ready to go. You know, like it's just, it's it's kind of like when you're, I don't know how I even would what I would equate it to really. You don't know what to expect. Yeah. Everyone's a bit nervous, apprehensive, excited. No one's tried it. Well, there was two people who had tried ayahuasca before, but everyone else, and even them. Wow. So a lot of new people. A lot of wow, new people. Wow, that's really cool. And even those people, they've done it, but you know coming to it that you don't know what any ceremony is going to hold or unfold. And so when it came, we did ceremony from 9 p.m. to about 1 1 a.m. in the morning or so. So it's about three hours that you're actually with the medicine and depending how long your journey goes. But uh, we always met sort of at 4 o'clock and just regrouped. And that's what we would like, take our mats in the ceremony maloka and find our spot for the evening, set up, bring everything there we needed to, and then disperse for the evening until 9 o'clock. And that period, everyone would like race into the, you know, the maloka and find their spot because it was something that they feel like if they sat in a certain spot, you know, this was calling them. And, you know, even saw some people shift around and it's, it's just a lot of intention a lot of mm-hmm. not knowing what's going to come up it's true yeah yeah and that's 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 very uh well said because you're right you never know every every ceremony i've ever had was very different yeah you know and it's not about what's in the cup no. as don howard says like yeah you know you have some people drink twice as much as others and have no experience at all mm-hmm. whereas some people will have like literally a third of a cup and have just a, a crazy strong experience and powerful experience and so it's much more than just the psychedelic compound of dimethyltryptamine or dmt which is in this tea this brew uh then you know it's not just a straight up a plus b equals c not no. even close yeah. it's like I can't even, there is no equation. Can you yeah. add num- uh, letters together? Oh, yeah, don't you remember? Uh, <laughs> geom- what's, what's, what, arith- yes, of course. Oh, yeah, there is. There's you can't always, add letters. There's lots of... Uh, I gave up trying. Oh, yeah. 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 You gotta go back to... You gotta go back to... A plus B works. does equal C. Well, right? A plus B. If you add A and B... Okay, never mind, sorry. No, they don't, I just they ruined don't the flow up. of the whole podcast. Yeah, no, that's fine. Go you back. Ruined, we had to break it up. It. I ruined it. This is called the comedic break, <clears throat> brought to you by Andor, Androne. Andrew Androne here. <laughs> well, we call him well, Androne now because he's he's got the, the VR Vancouver Real drone. We actually have mm, a drone now. What? Yeah, mm. go check oh, yeah. out our Instagram people and uh, Facebook and yeah. see the, the f- photography skills of Androne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Okay. Enough of that. All right. Back to ayahuasca. Back to ayahuasca. Boom. Okay. Um, so there's much more into the cup. You know, it's not. Yeah. It's not just A plus B equals C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first it's, night I found the ceremony, we we all kind of shared our questions during the four o'clock meeting, and um, everyone sort of addressed their fears. So everyone was really honest in this group and really open, which was really nice. There were a lot of vulnerable people, including myself at times. I don't like speaking in front of a group. That's one of my things. And I was like, "Eh." yeah, Mm, that is hard, isn't it? Yeah, it was great, though. Great to just like Mm -hmm. go at it again and again. And cool. Yeah, there's lots of sharing circles, lots of open questions, lots of gatherings where you can just start talking and chatting and and talking in front of the group. And also, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's amazing that you can be amongst strangers and literally be sharing the deepest, darkest secrets or issues or or uh, past traumas of your life, and and everyone there's no judgment. There's like, and if it is, it's definitely like you know, like it doesn't what, matter. It doesn't matter exactly. It doesn't matter. So it's like yeah. it's it's all about just. Just getting it out. Yeah, everyone's there with such a heartfelt intention that that's really sacred in itself. Yeah. It's like to get 28 people plus the shamans and the people who work there for such an intention. Like mm-hmm. that that makes it holy. I, I gotta ask you. Uh, you know, we got a little lighter here. How how was did you did you purge? Yeah. Um, did I purge? I purged about once each ceremony. Okay. Once once one of them twice and. Man, it was, um, it was fine. It was done, and that's it. Um, but I remember the first night. It's dark in the Maloka, and I kind of, I, I had a very mild experience. You could say I just had a really beautiful meditation, and and 
sat with the medicine and kind of felt it out a little bit. And when it was over, I left, but I had purged a bit and I looked in my bucket because they, you know, I was curious and I didn't know what was in there. It looked like something sparkly, like coming back at me. And I was like, wow. is this the darkness? Like whatever. And then mm. it was a couple nights later, I actually like saw it and I was like, no, that's the same crap. And it's <clears> just <throat> crap. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. So maybe it's a shimmer of light. You're like, whoa, well, yeah. I picked up some pixie dust, yeah. apparently. Perhaps. Well, my roommate, she's like, mine was green too. And I was like, <laughs> I couldn't figure out what whoa, color what mine was. Vomit. And I wasn't sure if it was from the dark or what. Yeah. I was like, what came out of me? Yeah. Mm. But No, I get that. Yeah. No, actually, I had a purge on mushrooms one time. Okay. It was crazy. It was like, here, I gotta go group cam. Um, it was uh, it was nuts. Like I literally felt like I had a little entity that was inside me, and when I got it out, I got this thing out that was really bothering me for a long time. And it's like I felt like there's an entity, and I literally yelled at it. And well, I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I yelled at it. Wow. Because it was like this. It felt like a, like a little entity, for lack of a better word of saying it. It was mm -hmm. a brown little piece of bile, but it's like whoa. And I was like, and I got this thing out, and I was just like, wow. And I felt immediately better after it came out. Was it connected? Was that purge? Was that entity connected with anything? Oh, yeah. It was like emotional? With, oh, yeah. It was connected to a thought that I was been hanging on to for a while. Mm. And I was just like, and I came up and I started talking about it. And I got sick immediately. Mm. I puked it and purged it. And like this little thing came out of me. And I was just like, what? That's and amazing. Then, you and then got I was it like, and you purged it. And then I felt it. really oh, good right away. It was so weird. I what can't do you describe think it. that is? What do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's really hard to say, but all like I know is what I felt, and what yeah. I felt was a, like, like a, a sense of distress, then sickness, then puking that little thing up, and then feeling better. Yeah, that's that's like st standard narrative for an ayahuasca like purge experience. But 100%. why is it the same for psilocybin? It's because it's not about. I don't think it's necessarily about what you're doing. I, I think <clears throat> what substance you're using. Like yeah. it's, I think it's. It's probably some sort of. I think it's some sort of natural cathartic reaction that we have, a healing reaction that once we are in a certain state of consciousness, altered by maybe a substance, maybe even not, but just like we get to that state and we're so connected with that thought or emotion or that trauma, whatever it is, and it's. Uh, it. It just manifest or connects to a purge and whether it's actually a, a, an entity or not it could just be you know i don't know just your releasing of that emotion your releasing of that chronic habitual thought it could be it. i don't know like it's 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 really curious this is the stuff i'd love to see some research yeah. on this gets some really smart people looking at this stuff i'm i'm finding with my experience since the ceremonies and after even being back because i i did some psilocybins the other day and had a bit of a like a intense body healing going on and with cannabis tuesday night too and i was like whoa mm. like something <clears throat> bigger is here and uh with the with the purge that you had i'm finding in my experience that when you reach those states and you bring all your awareness to that one thought you can change that thought and that's crazy and it seems like could have been perhaps that's what Very, you did it, it could have been mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that happened three or four times that night oh wow yeah yeah no, it's it's very ayahuasca esque yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah so let's uh yeah let's go back to you know what you know what was your you know your maybe your your most profound kind of realization whatever you feel like sharing to the yeah. extent but uh you know I didn't have any big visions on ayahuasca that a lot of people talk about. Um, the first ceremony was um, pretty mindful meditation. Uh, that was my experience. And I came, I walked away, I remember I was reading my journal earlier today and at the end of it, I, I sat up in an upright meditation posture the whole time. Some people were leaning against walls or lying down, whatever came up for them to do. And I pretty much tried to sit up for most of the ceremonies. I just felt like I, with posture, I was able to connect to the medicine the most because yeah. it was a very subtle experience most of the time for me. And at the end of the first ceremony, I lay down on my mat and I, cause I just felt a little tired. And as soon as I did, I felt like this blanket of love, lovingness, just like coat me. And I just like had this big smile on my face. And like the little sub subtleties like that in the ceremony without were constant throughout the week. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, as for the biggest experience or or thing taking away with it, it's just a 
deeper state of awareness, totally. Mm -hmm. um, during the second ceremony, I it was probably about the third Ikaros in. I was, uh, had a really grounding ceremony in my room before I, I went in. And up until that time where I sort of took that time to gather myself, I had actually had a really emotional day. There was a lot of things coming up for me. And I was like, how am I going to go into ceremony? And I was just able to find a piece of literature that really connected me back to my intention and my, my purpose and what I was there for. And I went in with just openness and uh, readiness for whatever was going to come. And I had a beautiful meditation leading up to about the third Ikaros and then suddenly Don Howard walked into the center of the room and he had this bag. I think he had come uh, back into the Maloka for maybe helping someone that had to go to their room. And he started shaking it and for me I just felt the intensity of the room start to shift. Mm. And I found that I, I felt like like everyone started purging more and it was just like it was a crazy night the second ceremony crazy and they said at the beginning of the second ceremony they said Don Robert was up there speaking in Spanish and Don Howard would translate and they said we're gonna we're gonna raise the intensity this time because the first time uh, the first ceremony a lot of people had a mild experience and they commented on it in the first sort of sharing and it's I said too mine was mild but I said what a beautiful space like you know, I my intention, I stayed with my intention, that was great, but a lot of people were disappointed, I found, right. from a mild experience. Yeah, that's, yeah, actually, yeah. I'll pause you there for a sec, because that's a huge point, <clears throat> yeah. uh, especially for those people who have maybe been saving up for years to go, have seen all these videos, have massive expectations, yeah. etc., um, and then they go and have a gentler, milder experience, and you're right, they're disappointed, you know. Oh, I didn't get blasted off and talk to aliens and talk to Mother Ayahuasca and see the serpents and see the jaguars and get this and the light show and all that. And, you know, that's not the point. That's not the point. The point isn't to blow your mind as far as you can go. The point is to to get really still and 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 reverence and, and reflect upon your life and and uh and trust that don robert and don howard the shamans are giving you what you probably need and the medicine as well is yeah. giving you what you need for that time and don't go in expecting you know again we have this mentality of like more is better and i need to have stronger experiences you know the ayahuasca arrows and the more you do ayahuasca you actually start taking less mm. of the medicine you actually start having gentler experiences on purpose because you can just naturally start facilitating deeper experiences yeah. and you don't need to have more you don't need to get blasted into outer space and not and get really confused and discombobulated and that's the thing i think taking any medicine um since i've <clears throat> before I left and coming back, like the the idea of being really aware of your dosage and where your limit is and riding that edge rather than like taking yourself way over because I found before too, sometimes um, a few slight health issues going on that where I wasn't sure, like sometimes with my cannabis experience, it was too much for my body and it was really a fuzzy experience. And um, it's, when I'm really careful though, always making sure I take the accurate dosage for the, for Don Howard said it once, he's like, you have to master these medicines. And I don't think you're mastering them in a sense, but you're, you're opening up to them. And when you're totally blown open and you're, you're not prepared for it, um, it, it can be hard to stay with it. It can actually be traumatizing in itself, yeah. you know? And that's another yeah. thing too, is like, you don't want to have this, this uh, uh, experience, this traumatic experience from trying to do something where you're actually trying to heal a post-traumatic uh, or a, a previous traumatic experience or emotional traumatic experience, whatever it is, yeah. you know, like you don't want to go so far that you have like this freak out or, and, and that creates more trauma and actually does more harm than good, yeah. you know? So it's, it's really a process and that's something I've learned personally because I, yeah, I mean, I just thought that I wanted to have a, a big blasting experience, but I was definitely like prepared for that and nearly expecting it based on all the research and videos I'd watched. But yeah. I learned, I learned now, especially after December, that it's really a patient process for me, and that um, I have um, it's really an inch at a time, and yeah. um, I, I have to respect that process and start to 
you know, I, I think there's there's things that I need to do outside of the ayahuasca ceremony, outside of that experience in my everyday life with my relationships to to everything, to my family, to myself, to to every action that I do. That's that's going to facilitate a deeper experience next time, potentially. And if a not, constant deeper yeah. experience. Like, yeah. like that's I was meditating or contemplating the other day and just the deepest reflection on like I, I didn't get it there either because I went down not like I was who's going to change my life but I felt the deep like oh something was going to die I actually went through like some sort of grieving period two weeks before I went and mm. I like emotions coming through that I had no idea what was going on yeah and I could sense um you know you could say maybe it's the medicine I'm already connecting to something energetically or maybe it's just my intention you know bringing up stuff but it's uh it's really interesting to watch that and uh, see those things unfold. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And is it something that you would do again? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How come? Uh, because it does connect you to something deeper, and uh, this retreat center as well, or this ayahuasca center, if you don't want to just call it a retreat center, it's not, it's so much more. Um, this space to partake in this medicine and connect with yourself is facilitated by these people who really hold a heart space, really hold a space of stillness and the deepest heartfelt intention. And it's always going to be positive then. I feel it always will be. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. And, uh, you know, I do have uh, plans to go back potentially later this year. Um, you know, and there's another medicine that's used at this retreat center that you didn't get to try called Wachuma mm -hmm. that I got to try in December. Uh, which is the San Pedro cactus, and the base uh, psychoactive component there is mescaline, and it's uh, it's it's a they 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 call ayahuasca the grandmother or the or the mother ayahuasca medicine, and it's a female energy, and Wachuma is the grandfather, you know, yeah. it's the it's the masculine energy, and it's actually done during the daytime. It's a little bit more active. We go on excursions when you're on it, and uh, whereas ayahuasca is done at nighttime with the moon in the dark, uh, less activity, you're kind of just confined to your seated space. And so I found that uh, personally, Wachumo was, I was able to connect to it a lot easier. Ayahuasca has been, it's uh, many challenges for me personally in a lot of different mm -hmm. ways, but which is good because it's, it's teaching me a ton and it has taught me a ton and still is like, I, 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 not, not a day go by, goes by that I don't reflect on it in some way shape or form mm -hmm. like consciously actually think about it which is i don't know maybe it's a sign of insanity i don't know but i don't care i like i like how i'm growing i feel i am growing and evolving as a person and and um for the better and that's why i i still have a curiosity and, and a lack for a better word and a way overused word in this regards but a calling to keep doing it um but you know since i've come back from December, I haven't used any other psychoactive substances oh, wow. except for except for cannabis. Yeah, um, just hasn't hasn't I haven't needed to. I yeah. haven't wanted to yet. I've known a lot of people too who've sat with a lot of ayahuasca and they they don't use much for other yeah. medicines anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, it's really special. Um, and again, it's not for everybody, but. Um, if you're curious, do your due diligence. But I think the way you did it was really cool. The fact that you didn't really know too much and have too much expectations, that's, there's some, you gotta find the right little balance. Mm -hmm. Enough, yeah. you need to know enough information for yourself to have the confidence to go do it and 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 safely and, and obviously go to the right place to do it. Um, Biopark.org is the website for yeah. Spirit Quest Sanctuary if anyone's looking for that, can't recommend it enough. Um, but then, you know, at one point, once you feel good about that decision, like, okay, I'm going to go, then just stop watching other people's experiences exactly, yeah. and just get ready for your own experience. And what I, I got lost in thought be or talked before, but what I was going to say was um, uh, so many, there's this hype about ayahuasca and down there too, a lot of people spent the day talking about their experiences and I'm like, I just did a deep contemplation the other day, let's, let's talk about the space it takes us to, let's... Let's, you know, praise that rather than just the plant that gets us there. It's all right. part of it, but yep. um, that it can happen anyway, right? Yep, but ayahuasca absolutely. is, uh, since I've been back, it's like a container that's holding 
everything else. Mm. It's, 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 yeah. Cool. It's pretty cool. Really cool. Well, any other questions out of you, Mr. No, I've been just Mr. listening Andy. and observing because I haven't done ayahuasca. Well, I did it once, kind of. Did one ceremony. It was actually a good ceremony. It's a real deal. Uh, I, at least I thought it was the real deal. Oh, yeah. And, uh, actually, I Jacob was here two days ago. He was actually here. Mm. Yeah, actually, I gave him a float. Oh, and he floated. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but I'm really looking forward to going down there. So yeah, so it is on your to do list. Oh, for sure, yeah, and hopefully, uh, hopefully and, November. And for someone like yourself, you know, why do you want to do it? Well, I've, I've had this little theme the last couple of days. I've been working. I always get these little themes, and I, and I kind of play with ideas for a little while. And my little theme was now that I feel like there's really only two realms, two frontiers that kind of interest me, and one of those ones is outer space. Okay. But unfortunately, I don't have billions and billions of dollars so i'm gonna leave that to spacex and let them go to mars that's cool and the other one was the inner realms inner space and i feel like that inner space uh need, needs to be explored a lot more and i feel like that's a whole new frontier that human beings need to go into you know i think that you know we explore so much of this planet we know so much about the physiology we know so much about business we know so much we know we have we know so much but we know so little too at the same time but uh, I just feel like that inner space is is the next frontier I need to go to for whatever reason, yeah. and that's why. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would even add to that and say it's the re-frontier because I think these are realms that past ancestral humans had regular access to. You know, mm -hmm. the Aboriginals of Australia literally called it dream time, and, and uh, you know, indigenous cultures all the world have different. Um, traditions and techniques be it via plant medicines or fasting or trance dance or whatever or even sound and vibrational rhythms to put them into these altered states of consciousness to have these unifying experiences these uh, you know dissolving the permeability between the conscious and the subconscious mind um, <clears throat> and you know I, I really think it's a part of humanity and somehow over the last, I don't know, hundred thousand whatever years, <clears throat> there's been a huge, there's been a divergent population that's gone off on its own branch that got away from that, and actually that divergent population exploded in po in numbers <coughs> and became more agriculturally and industrially advanced, technologically Jericho. advanced. Jericho. 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 The grain silos of Jericho. That was the first. That was like the first kind of uh, like f civilization that was permanent that they know of, <clears throat> and that this this group uh, had uh, this whole stash of grain that they made this gi giant grain silo in Jericho. So sure. McKenna talks about this a lot. Oh, cool. And then with that grain silo, they had a surplus. Now, of course, they have to protect that surplus. So then they go and they build a wall around it. And that's when you start kind of getting what we're into today. Yeah. All that and also it creates um, people don't have to go and find food. Yeah. And they can start specializing. Specialization happens. And, you know. and the population explosion. When you have a surplus, yeah. you have the calories to support a population. That population can now grow. And I feel like it's all just part of it. It's all just part of the journey. So you yeah. can't really criticize no. the Industrial Revolution and where we are right now. Um, but I think that it's part of it. And now it's coming around again. You yeah, know? I think so whatever it's all, that means. Yeah, I don't know. And it's definitely all, it seems to just be all one big process. And there's cycles <clears throat> at work here. So I got something in my throat. But there's cycles at work here that uh, are so big. And again, we're, you know, alive for 80, 90 years at best, yeah. this little slice of time. And there's, you know, cycles at work here. I mean, like, like die was saying, you know, our, our universe is estimated to be 13.8 billion years, which if you condense that down to a calendar year, the human existence is only three seconds at the end of that year. Cool. And you know what? You know what the crazy thing is? If we didn't go through all that, I wouldn't have a drone right now, yes. or I should say, yeah. Float House's drone. Vancouver Real my drone. It's 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 actually Float House's drone, but whatever the VR drone. Right. And we had to go there to get the drone. Yeah. So now we got the drone. We got that that area life figured out. We got smartphones. We're good. All right. Now let's go back. I know. Yeah. 
I think let's stop focusing on where we, you know, we could have been or we would be and where we are because that's that's where the potential yeah, is. Yeah, you're right, 100%. And yeah. here's where we are, uh, 2015, where there are some mega shifts happening in all different walks of life and parts of the world and in different, you know, parts of our culture and society. And it's a fascinating time to be alive, you know, with the internet, information is communicated instantaneously now and, and it's, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, and I think that's where we are with Float House. That's where we are with a lot of different things, right? Yeah. You know, it's kind of uh, it's all the same realm, same kind of sphere. Yeah. I don't know what that sphere is exactly, but I think all everything's related. Yeah, what is that? Everything's connected I don't know. to everything. I don't you know. know. I don't know what that is. Yeah. You know, there is something though that um, connects. Why you know? I feel like meditation, yoga, psychedelics, uh, floating is part of that. Um, I, don't, I just feel like there's that whole realm that's all related and it's all kind of part of the same thing. Sure. Mm. Well, yeah, and, and I say that you're lot, even but. saying that um, you know you, you're involved with it's called cold cold laser therapy. Um, the yeah. website you're, you're re- referring is coldlasertherapyworks.com. Coldlasertherapyworks.com. I'm gonna update uh, the. Uh the page for the specials but other than that it's good to go yeah cool yeah. cool what is yeah. cold therapy cold laser therapy um so it's using light energy we are we're made up of energy we're made up of we're light beings if we break it down i remember not long ago sitting at kids beach and looking at north vancouver and seeing the lights in the distance and i was like wow it's like they're moving and then i brought it back and i'm like i've seen that before it looks like the light in the distance is sort of just like quivering almost and I'm like, but if I was standing under that light, it would not be. It would be a structured, formed thing. And mm-hmm. I'm like, somewhere in the universe, something is looking at us, and we're these little light, right? Lights quivering in a sense. And I was like, well, you know, just it put it into perspective for me. So, cold laser therapy is simply using light energy, laser diodes, to increase cellular energy. So we're made up of cells cells live and die they're dying and being reborn constantly so it's the maintenance of healthy cells that we want in the body to keep our body healthy so cool. this laser is cool because it uses three multiple light wavelengths but also some pretty cool scalar technology so you can use it for energy work in the body too i come home after work or whatever and just use it around my head and it just clears anything i picked up hmm. in the day interesting yeah I mean, and, and some people might be like, oh, you start using words like light and energy, we're beings of light, and they get skeptical, and I under- completely understand that. Um, but one thing I do know is my, as my understanding of existence, my life uh, has deepened, um, and largely due to ayahuasca, actually, that's where I really started to understand the energetic quality of my life. You know, I really, there's uh, there's several things that ayahuasca has like kind of really, um, you know, co- r- confirmed. Like after you, you read this stuff in these books and these new age books and stuff like that, you hear yoga teachers talking about this stuff until you have an experience that kind of um, solidifies that for you. You just like, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's just knowing about something right. until you know it. It's- yeah. And, yeah. and for me, that's what ayahuasca did. It really showed me one how much of an energetic being I am and how much there's like these forces of energy that kind of work with you all the time. And then and then and then connecting to my heart, mm-hmm. you know, that was a big one. That's still in its work, but uh, that was my intention back in Peru. And it's yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. so cool. So um, Carmel, Stace, thank you so much for you, accepting guys. this. Thank you. Coming thank on. you so much for this trip. Like you can't tell the viewers enough like what this what this does what this gives someone and what you guys gave cool. yeah well thank you so yeah, much do you think you. we should do it again yeah absolutely uh, absolutely cool uh it'd be amazing to like have someone from vancouver in this group go down every year like there was a guy there was a couple from calgary there a young couple and uh met them at the Kitos airport and we started talking and they were, i told them i won this trip through you guys and they're they're viewers in calgary or, sorry edmonton 
I believe Edmonton guys, sorry if I get that wrong. And um, they're like, no way, man, I, I applied, I, I submitted my entry for that contest. And oh, they were part of it too. They were part of it too, wow. so it was crazy. That's, that's yeah. the reach, that's the funny thing, the reach is really yeah. crazy sometimes. Like yeah. we have, we had like this guy, uh, a guy we hired to work at Float House. He was a fan of London Real. Okay. Then he heard the of, UK. he's from the UK, and he knew he's moving to Vancouver. And he heard of Vancouver Real through London Real, and then he heard of Float House through Vancouver Real. Okay. And then he applied for a job here, and now he's working here. Nice. It's the crazy stuff like that, right? Yeah. It's, it's 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 really not even. You hear stories like that, and then they were down there in Peru with you at yeah. the same time. Like yeah. what? And they're like, Nuts. "How'd you hear about ayahuasca? How'd you hear about Spirit <clears throat> Quest?" And I'm like, "They're like Joe Rogan, Aubrey Marcus," and I'm like, "Yeah, but also like Vancouver Rio and." Wow. Yeah. yeah that's totally. well, that's cool, but um, I don't know. I don't even know. We, we talk about this a lot. Like, why are we doing this? Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. we talk about like, what are we doing? A lot of it comes down to enjoyment. Yeah. You just really like having these kind of conversations. Yeah, um, I love. I mean, I could talk. I'd love to go into the detail of mapacho yeah. and everything. You know, I I can talk about this stuff because actually that's the cool thing when you go on the retreat, you get to have these conversations all day long. Yeah, for like a whole week and a half, and it's awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, so cool. Thanks a lot for coming yeah, on and you. sharing. Thank you. And uh, you should probably reapply. You never know. I maybe you're, I'm like, maybe you're destined to go. Sure, yeah. Why not? <laughs> New why contest. Not? Yeah, of course. We could just rename it the Carmel Stace Ayahuasca Send Off. I'll bring all my we'll just, friends. Come on, guys. We'll just yeah. send you every yeah, year, and you come back, and you tell us how much you've changed and how yeah. you merged with Mother Ayahuasca. But yeah. the, the neat thing about what That's happened true. too is like you went down there, you had that experience now you're like another seed that kind of went out into the city here in vancouver and is now talking about your experience telling mm -hmm. people and it's weird because it, it kind of it's like transplanting an idea uh, and spreading it in a, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a really strange kind of way well even for my friends like i'm from manitoba originally and my yeah. friends there like told a few of them what i was going to do and some of them probably not but you know messages from everyone who's barely heard about ayahuasca and they're like oh wow how are you doing cool. and like how was your trip down to peru and they'd never heard about it before but super like excited hearing the potential of it and and what awesome. this what this is so yeah, yeah you're definitely spreading the word well, yeah. cool well, thank you thank you for the gifts it's really awesome yeah. i'm really stoked to read this book yeah. have a little couple of mapachos by the sunset yeah, mm. and uh, if, if you're interested to reach out to Carmel, um, Carmel Stace is S T O E S Z. Yep. Connect you on Facebook, maybe. Connect me on Facebook. Um, you, my website too. You can shoot me an email, and um, yeah, I, I sell the lasers, and I also do sessions for people. Cool. So got great awesome. discounts if you do want a couple of packages or cool. per session. So that's coldlasertherapyworks.com. dot com. Yeah. Carmel C A R M E L S T O. E S Z. Yeah. Spelt or pronounced Stace. <laughs> yeah. A Mennonite background. There you go. Oh wow. German. Oh my gosh. So, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so uh, connect yeah. with her if you have any questions about her okay. experience as well. And um, thank you so much for coming back thank and coming you guys. on. All thank right. you. To whatever it is. To whatever, whatever it is. is. Yes. I love it when the guest says it. <laughs> awesome. And we're done.